an exercise uh, from my end. I think uh, we'll not make that much of impact as far as, I mean, the control of the depreciation of the CD is concerned. Now, let's look at what makes the black market and the composition of the black market clearly. I mean, when we talk about black market, it is an underground, you know, market, i.e., which forms part of the, you know, the, the underground economy. It is difficult to identify them. It is difficult to measure the economic activities, and therefore, you cannot easily manage. Now, the kind of soup that Bank of Ghana did with the police, clearly, is going to give the black market relocation. So they went to Tito Lane. Because you cannot identify them, they can disintegrate and still operate. If they come together to form a cluster, that is when you can easily identify them and say, I'm going to get them here. But what about being in their houses and then taking transactions on their phones? How would you identify them? For me, the question has to do with how does the black market get a dollar? Because if you look at, you know, in terms of if you split a market into two, the formal market and then the black market, the market that can easily have access to the dollar is the formal market. But the question is, how does the black market get the dollar? And for the fact that the black market is getting the dollar through scarce means, they enjoy, they put up certain premium, which makes it different from what the formal market is offering. So effectively, we should, you know, for the police to go straight to the black market, they should, uh, sorry, the Bank of Ghana to go straight to the black, black market, they should assess themselves, run through all the banks, and see how does the money or the dollar filter to the black market for transaction to go on there. If the black market has no, has no dollar, and it turns out that there's demand, they cannot meet that demand, there won't be market. So effectively, there is a supply and demand activities going on in that black market. So I would say that instead of going on the street chasing something that you cannot easily, you know, catch. I mean, 70 in, in Accra. Have you been to Kumasi, Alaba? Have you been to other places that, you know, um, the, 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 the dollar is being used, uh, you know, we, we, as foreign market is going on in a black space? No, you've not, you can't go around, you know, getting all this black market that exists. In the worst case, they're going to disintegrate, be in their homes, at the end of the day, take phone calls and meet at, at, a, at a place and then exchange, you know, transactions. So for me, it's a dangerous market. You cannot easily identify them. Therefore, you cannot measure them. And as a result of that, you can manage. So leave them alone. But then you must answer the question as to how does the dollar filter itself into the black market. If you're able to block it, it should be able to go a long way to help. If you are looking at the transmission of the dollar all the way to the market where individuals and businesses can transact, it comes from the Bank of Ghana, and then to the banking hall, and then to the forest bureaus. So if the line that makes all the barrier that makes the dollar filter to the market, to the black market, is between the forest bureaus and then the, the black market, it must be looked at. If it's between the banks and the black market, it must be looked at. And I won't be surprised for someone to go to the, to the, to the banking hall to be told that, hey, look, if you go to this allergy, you can get a quantum of dollars that you want at the black market. So effectively, the fine thin line between where the dollar is concentrated, i.e., it could be the regulator, from the regulator level to the banking hall, and then to the first groups, we must be able to block these channels. And that will be able to help, you know, control the seeping of the dollar to the black market, rather than allowing it to go to the black market and chasing it where you cannot find this black market, you cannot identify them, you cannot measure them, who they are. They catch them at the Tito Lane or whatever the name is. The next time they won't come there anymore. They'll be on the different street doing their own thing. In the worst case, they're going to disintegrate completely, use different mechanisms of communication, and then they'll be doing their transactions. So I believe in how you can stop it at a point where it's supposed to be formalized. And then possibly bring up regulations. If possible, you assign the various ferrous groups 
to the individual banks to serve as monitors as to how the forest bridges operate. Then the regulator will also control the banks as to how they move the dollar to the forest bridges. So effectively, these are mechanisms that we may have to put in place rather than allowing the, 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 the dollar to seep down and then get it to the point where it has disintegrated, get into several hands, then you start chasing it, you waste resources, you waste time, you will not catch anything. Let me put it that way.